Okay, let's talk about the ABCTE exam. And specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, math related questions and obviously the math uh, certification exam as well. But if you're going for another exam that's not the math exam, maybe you're doing an elementary or maybe you're doing a science exam, you're going to have math on your exam. Even the science related questions, whether you're doing physics or chemistry, you know, you're, you're, many of your questions are going to involve math skills. Now, I'm talking to you with a lot of uh, professional respect because if you're going for an ABCTE exam, it means that hey, you're you're going to be you're a professional. You know, you're you're knowledgeable, you're skilled, you have a degree, and you're going for a certification. Okay, so that's you know that's a big deal. You know, and that, and we need, <laughs> believe me, we need a lot of uh, great teachers out there. You know, I mean, there's a lot of great teachers already, but you know, believe me, there's a shortage of even more. Okay, so um, I think that if you're passionate for teaching, uh, this is a great pathway to get your certification. However, it's not like an easy exam, and it really shouldn't be either, because you think about the regular traditional teaching path. You know, you, um, oftentimes that may add an additional year to your college education just to get your teaching certification. So myself, I have a degree an undergraduate degree uh, in pure mathematics, a uh, BA in mathematics, uh, but I had to go on and, and spend oh over a year in a master's program uh, in education just to get my certification when I went back and became a teacher. Then I spent more time getting my master's degree. So you put in your time and it, teaching, you know, is a skill. So, you know, I came from many years ago, um, uh, from a military officer background, I was also in corporate America, did a lot of engineering work, and you have all these kind of skills and, and whatnot, but these, even though you have a high level of knowledge in your particular area, it might be biology, chemistry, physics, math, whatever the case might be, English, um, when you come into the teaching field, and I'm speaking from experience, you really got to open yourself up as like a brand new student, okay, uh, because just because you've done presentations and PowerPoint presentations or training, professional training or, or whatever the case is, it's completely different when you're dealing with, um, you know, elementary level um, kids, middle school, high school. And even if you're a parent, which I am myself, you might say, well, I'm, I'm a parent. I deal with kids all the time. It's not the same. Believe me what I'm telling you. So you're, you're, you're stepping into a career path that is exciting, but I also want to encourage you to be a student, okay, and and learn from those those teachers out there that have been doing it for 20, 30 years successfully. Okay, they're going to be a massive uh, uh, resource for you. But obviously, the first thing you have to do is get you know past the, the ABCTE exam for your particular certification. So what I'm going to be talking about is some some uh, math tips. Okay, now. If you're struggling with math, you're you know like a little bit overwhelmed. And you want some sort of a program, and you find that you like my teaching style. I offer an ABCTE math prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. I also have many, many, many videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Now, let's say I'm speaking to uh, an individual. You yourself may have a degree in mathematics or an engineering degree, and you're like, well, you know, we know an equal amount of math. You very well may know more math than I. But here's the thing, you doing differential equations or a calculus or whatever the case is, linear algebra, that your brain is maybe stuck in a very advanced world. Believe me, you have to, uh, when you're gonna be teaching this stuff to high school students or middle school students, you have to shift and really get become a master of fundamental algebra, high school level geometry, all that kind of good stuff. And you, and you gotta kind of, bring yourself back in and learn how to teach okay and really become a master of that material so my um, particular course lays out it's taught um, uh, from the point of view of as if a high school student was going to be taking this material so you can kind of see my teaching style as it relates to you know how I taught in uh, you know schools so anyways just wanted to throw that out there now let's get into um, some study tips to help you prepare for uh, the ABCTE math related questions or the math exam. Okay, so the first thing is you need to review. Now this is like probably common sense. You're like, yeah, well that's obvious, but you really need to review 
and not be, let's say, um, don't assume, okay? Just because you have, you know, again, the professional background and whatnot, be like, well, you know, I have this degree or I have this. You've been away from a lot of this math for, for quite some time, okay? So you're going to have to brush up on a lot of stuff and go back and review. And that means you very well may have to relearn things. And there's no shame in that, okay? I'm going to tell you right now as a teacher, uh, when you take, let's say, your summer break and you have to go back and teach um, complex numbers or, or, you know, completing the square with quadratic equations, all that kind of stuff, you need to review before you teach a lesson. So you should get in the habit of reviewing, um, uh, you know, anyways. Okay, I'm coming at this not only for this, uh, coming at these tips not only for you as a, you know, as a person that has to take this exam, but also as someone who's going to be teaching. Okay, so you would expect your students to review. You should review as well. Now, what you um, review is going to be totally up to you because, again, you already have this professional knowledge. So um, there's courses out there. You know, whether you can take a complete full course, that's, you know, that's really going to be determined upon how much time you have. Uh, then there's obviously tons of books. Okay, so you can you know select there's tons of resources out there get the one that works for you but do some review before you take the exam all right the second thing is notes now again I'm telling you something super obvious you're like this is not really helping me well it is because I want you to start thinking as a um, as a student believe me I've taught math many many years many many years okay you need to want you you know stress to your students to take notes because notes equals retention all right and you need to get in a frame of mind that you are now a student for this particular exam so take notes now your notes don't have to be you know completely super comprehensive because if you're taking notes for you know uh, algebra one geometry algebra two pre-calculus trigonometry calculus you're going to end up with a massive amount of notes but take the notes that you need to take but just don't skim through okay start building the skills because you're going to be the leader you're going to be a person that's up in front of 20 30 kids in a classroom and the way you expect them to learn you need to start practicing right now so i'm telling you from experience that note taking is probably one of the most important things that a student can take now good neat well organized notes but this is really important okay so obviously I don't need to tell you how to be a student because again you've been a student a great student obviously um, throughout your life or you wouldn't even be considering this exam but you yourself should get in the habit to at least structure some notes write some things down that's gonna really help with your retention okay and your focus and then the third thing I'm going to say is something, again, you already know, you need to practice, okay? When it comes to math, there's just no better way of, of absorbing the material, making sure you understand it by doing practice problems. And this is the formula for successful math students at the middle school level, high school level, college level doesn't make a difference right so you yourself need to practice and even you know you think about it and I'm um, talking to those that maybe have some math you know, math degrees out there physics degrees at least from my university and I went to a very good university um, uh, you know there was a lot the people that were in the engineering program the really tough sciences math uh, physics not many of them as I recall, we're walking around with 3.8 GPAs or 4.0. Many of them were like, you know, the 3.0, 2.7, 3.2 in their advanced math courses or uh, physics courses. Why? Because those courses are extremely challenging, okay? So there is kind of a, a, a curve, if you will, when it comes to GPAs and college degrees. Now, I'm not taking away from anybody who's saying, well, you know, you might be offended you're like, well, you know, my degree was tough and I majored in marketing or whatever. I'm not taking away from your experience. What I am saying is that um, that the people that I and I was with some super smart people that can be very, very did very well in their careers. No one was really you now there was maybe one or two that really had top aced everything. But the majority of the people and these are very intelligent people, you know, um, were challenged. I mean, 
like my professors all like had PhDs from Harvard, Caltech, MIT. It was pretty humbling to be in some of these <laughs> classes, right? So uh, I was challenged, okay? That doesn't mean that you're going to get everything the first time. So what I'm saying is go back and be like, wow, that was, you know, you're, we're not we're not perfect people you know if you're even if you have a degree it doesn't mean you're going to be doing math oh, perfectly 100 percent of the time so there's a tendency to have this you know maybe some ego there and i'm speaking about myself we're like oh well you know i know this uh and then you go ahead and you, you do some work and and you make a mistake right you don't want to do that you don't want to um have that happen to you so practice and practice like some of the more fundamental things like go ahead and solve some quadratic equations go ahead and you know um, do some uh, synthetic division or polynomial long division or or you know whatnot you know some basic trigonometry problems you know I bet you, you you'll, you'll be surprised you'll be like oh wait a minute here I need to kind of I know how to do this here's the famous quote I know how to do this but I, I gotta I gotta remember real quick well this is what I'm trying to say okay Go back and start remembering it's it the, the materials in your in your brain. It's there. You were successful in it, or you wouldn't be where you're at today. But it's like riding a bike. If you haven't done it in a while, you're going to have to go back and review. And you should start thinking like, okay, I need to pass this test, but how do I want to teach? What are the principles? You want to be a teacher, and I'm telling you right now, you're going to come across. A lot of different types of students, students that can teach themselves, the students who really struggle, but the fundamentals of learning, especially when it comes to math, you know, are these are key. These are absolutely critical. All right. So um, don't know if this video helped you out. I hope it did. I'm speaking passionately um, to you, and I'm trying to, um, you know, encourage you uh, really in a, in a career in teaching because you're going to you're going to be able to help so many people from your uh, your professional experiences. You know, I did a lot of things in my life, in, and I, I um, outside of teaching before I became a teacher, and it made me a better teacher. I was more like passionate because a lot of these young people, you know, I still hear from many today that are you know done with their uh, master's program, being successful out there. And in, in today's day and age, you know, you can get caught up in the noise and the controversies and stuff like that. But teachers are critical. You really do influence the next generation. So I encourage you for sure to go for it. Okay. And don't let math, you know, definitely uh, stop you. So again, if you need some uh, some kind of formal course, you kind of think you like the way I teach, you can check out uh, my um, course. Um, I'll leave the link again in the description of the video. And if you enjoy my uh, videos, I post all the time. Hopefully, you'll consider subscribing. And if you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Let me know how things are going for you as a teacher. Um, you know, I think this is a really excellent uh, program, this APCTE program. I think it's, I guess, related to, like, other programs that maybe, like, troops to teachers where you go from military. You know, other states have other type of programs that might be you know, similar but different, like the alternate route program. Listen. Uh, there's a lot of people later in life that, that discover, hey, they want to go into teaching and they didn't go the formal certification route. So this is an opportunity, okay? And I wish you all the best uh, on this exam. Thanks for your time and have a great day.